Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christy. My name is Dr. Christy Reisinger, and today I'm gonna to talk about the current and updated guidelines for the treatment of type two diabetes. The American College of Physicians, which is a very reliable and trustworthy organization, just updated their type two diabetes treatment guidelines. This is a welcome change and much needed, but I wanted to share this with everyone so that if you have a doctor that's set in his or her ways, you can gently encourage them or consider switching doctors if they won't get you on the newer medications that have been shown to be so helpful. Okay, so you've been diagnosed with type two diabetes, now what? Well, your doctor should talk to you about meaningful lifestyle modifications that of course includes weight loss and dietary changes. But if those do not work, then the addition of metformin is usually added. Metformin is a pill that comes in 500 or 1000 milligrams and your doctor should increase your metformin to a max dose of 2000 milligrams per day. And that can be taken all at one time or spread out over the day. But if that still does not get you to the goal of a hemoglobin A1C less than 7%, then additional interventions should be considered. So what should those be? Your doctor then should talk with you about placing you on an SGLT2 inhibitor or a GLP-1 agonist. So let me go through those two classes of medications. The GLP-1 agonists you've heard a lot about on my channel. These are medications like semaglutide, also known as Ozempic, and terzepatide, also known as Manjaro. They're injectable medications that you give yourself once a week. And one of the beneficial side effects for a lot of patients is weight loss. And there have been some great studies that have shown that these medications are good for patients that have known cardiovascular disease because they've been shown to be helpful to prevent heart attacks and strokes. The next class of medications that should be considered is the SGLT2 inhibitors. This class of medications includes Invacana, Jardiance, and Farxiga. These are pills that you take daily, and they've been shown to be helpful in patients with chronic kidney disease, congestive heart failure, and those with known cardiovascular disease. This medication is weight neutral. You don't really tend to lose weight on this medication, but thankfully it doesn't cause weight gain. And with both of these classes of medications, the SGLT2s and the GLPs, they don't normally cause dangerous hypoglycemia or low blood sugar which can be seen with some of the older medications. Both of these classes of medications too have been shown to help reduce the risk of mortality, which that's just amazing. If you have not been successful in lowering your hemoglobin A1C below 7% on metformin, your doctor should talk to you about either one of these two classes of medications and tailor it towards what you're specifically looking for. Your doctor should not put you on a DPP-4 inhibitor. This is also a newer class of medications and they're pills that you take daily, but the data is just really not great with this class of medication. This includes medications like Ongliza, also known as Saxagliptin, Trigenta, also known as Lenagliptin, or Genumet, which is that Citagliptin plus Metformin combo. And you should absolutely stay away from the older medications like Actos, also known as Pioglitazone, or the class known as Sulfonylureas, this includes medications like glipizide and glimepiride. Man, these two classes of medications, the Actos and glipizide, glimepiride, oh gosh, they can cause dangerously low blood sugars and they cause weight gain. The only benefit I can think about with both of these is that they're very inexpensive and they're pills that you take daily. Insulin really should be considered as a last resort if all of these other interventions haven't been helpful or if your type two diabetes is just incredibly uncontrolled upon presentation. And sometimes I use insulin for a short period of time to get them under better control before I can switch them over to some of these oral and once a week injectable medications. At the end of the day, I am a doctor, but I'm not your doctor. 
So these are generalizations that you absolutely must talk to your own doctor about. These guidelines though are exciting and I'm hoping that it will help patients and doctors alike start to use these newer classes of medications with such good data. If you like what you see, please consider liking and subscribing to my channel where I'll continue to post on general internal medicine with an emphasis on obesity. Thanks for joining me.